Hello and welcome to my latest uh, Ask Bish. So I'm using videos now to answer some of your questions. So thank you for sending your questions in. I'm sorry I'm a bit delayed getting to this question, uh, dear listener. But um, as you can see, first of all, there is I've got a little content note on the screen just there, I think, uh, or there. I don't know which way I'm pointing. There. Um, uh, about sexual violence. I'm not going to talk about sexual violence in any detail, but um, this question relates to um, someone's um, experiences of sexual abuse when they were young and poor, uh, but there's no detail at all. Um, so it's up to you whether you want to watch the video, I'm just putting that out there. So um, here is the question. As you can see, the subject is boyfriend watching porn. Uh, my question is this. He says he rarely watches it and I found two instances on his phone where he was. He's very, he's very intelligent and works for O2 and knows his way around technology. Um, he says he doesn't remember doing it and can't tell me why or where he did his acts. So presumably like where he watched the porn and whether he was masturbating or not. I have a childhood trauma from porn, uh, sexually abused, they say in, in quote marks. And he knows my thoughts and feelings on porn. Can he actually not remember or is he bullshitting me? Um, so first of all, I should say it sounds like you're really struggling. Uh, it sounds... Uh, like you're in a rubbish situation and it sounds like there might be some unresolved stuff for you about porn and obviously that's really tricky I'm really sorry um, about your sexual abuse and that, that happened and it's wrong and um, hopefully you can you might be able to find some support about that however your kind of question is asking me about your boyfriend's behavior and uh, I'm not so I'm not going to like come down on your boyfriend in the way that you might want me to, okay? If you're going to ask me about um, uh, about stuff for you, about how you deal with uh, seeing pornography um, or how that relates to what happened to you when you were younger, that's a question that I might be able to help you with more. Uh, but you're asking me about your boyfriend and actually I don't think your boyfriend's doing a huge amount wrong and um, I think there's some stuff here for you to think about. Um, but I'm going to unpack this. Okay, so first of all, um, you're questioning about whether, about your boyfriend saying he rarely watches porn. Now, it is possible for people, and it's common for people to rarely watch porn. Okay, you might imagine it's not like a simple binary of if you're into porn, then you're massively into porn and you watch it all the time and you watch loads and loads and loads and you know, you subscribe to a load of. Uh, porn studios and that kind of thing uh, or the other binary is that you never ever watch it there's a huge spectrum in between between there are people who never watch porn and there are people who watch porn a lot and there's a big spectrum in between okay and um, so there is like a huge a huge difference in how interested people are in porn okay and actually the studies show that um, certainly most young people under the age of 16 I'm sensing that you're both over 16 you've not put your ages in here but um, uh, up until the age of 16, studies suggest that actually most young people don't look for uh, porn or sexually explicit materials. Um, the people's um, interest in porn increases as they get older. So if, say, like you're 18, 20 or a little bit older, it's possible, it's more likely that an 18, 20, 25-year-old has seen porn. But that doesn't mean that... that um, all 18, 19, 20, 30-year-olds have looked at porn or are interested in looking at porn. Um, so uh, the other thing just to remind you as well is that there is a huge spectrum of pornographic materials and also sexually explicit materials um, so it ranges from like hardcore pornography which is where you see people actually having sex acts to softcore pornography where it's people modeling in the nude typically uh, to things that we see on TV things that we see in films things that we read in books things that we read on people's blogs uh, and even audio porn now which is you know I think that's good um, so it is possible for um, so it is possible and also people look at porn for lots and lots of different reasons so sometimes people are looking at porn because they want to be sexually turned on but sometimes they look at porn because they're bored or just they want to see something new or they want to learn about something or they want to learn how to do something um, and sometimes people watch things for like the yuck factor as well like they deliberately watch something that like squicks them out even though it's perfectly fine for other people to do that that person or somebody might watch something that someone else is really into but they're not deliberately in order to be like oh look at that kind of thing um, which I don't think is cool but people do do that um, so also like some people don't take looking at porn very seriously um, obviously looking at porn is very serious for you because a serious thing happened to you around porn 
but some people could literally just be as blase about looking at a porn clip as they are looking at a meme or uh, watching an episode of Friends, which we should never ever do. Um, so don't read too much into the fact that he's seen some pornography, okay? Don't leap to um, conclusions um, that he is um, looking at porn all the time, like behind your back. However, um, he is entitled to his own private sex life. Like, even if you are monogamous, in a monogamous relationship, that doesn't mean you get to control your partner's fantasies, okay? It doesn't mean that you get to control um, what it is that they think about. It doesn't mean that you get to prevent them from having some private time by themselves, okay? Even if you live together, you should be able to negotiate having private time or just, like, looking the other way if they're spending a bit too long in the bathroom or if they've shut themselves in the bedroom and having some quiet time or, or if they're kind of, like, waiting for you to go out in order for them to have a bit of private time. What they do in that private time is none of your business because it's private, okay? So um, your boyfriend is entitled to have some private time. You're entitled not to know what he does in that private time. If you're like, uh, if you were to say, if you look at porn, I don't want to know. I'd rather you didn't look at porn. And certainly I don't want to know if you look at porn. Don't tell me about porn. Don't tell me if you've been wanking. I don't want to know what you think about. I don't want to know. You have your private time. That's fine. But I don't want to know. That's good. That's fine. That's okay. That's a good boundary. Because that's your boundary that you don't want him to cross over. But you can't cross over into his boundary and say, I don't want you to do things in private even when I'm not there. Okay. I don't think that's, I personally don't think that's right. Okay. Um, I think a lot of people would agree. I think it's just the more ethical thing to do to allow people to have their own lives. Right. Just in the same way that you might have your own friends, you might have your own interests, you might have your own hobbies, you might have your own ambitions. It's also important for us to have our own private time, our own wants and needs and desires, okay, that we only want to meet by ourselves. Um, so I think that's important. Um, the other thing here is like you're looking through his phone, okay, so like unless he's given you specific permission to look through his phone, I don't think you should be looking through his phone. His phone is his phone, it's his domain, it's his area. I wouldn't be very happy if he was looking through your phone either. Your phone is your area, your domain, your thing. Uh, if he was going through your phone looking at this email that you sent to me, like, you wouldn't be very happy about that, right? So, or if you're looking at texts that you're sending, if, if he's looking at texts that you're sending to your friends about this or about anything else, you wouldn't be very happy about that. I wouldn't be very happy about that. Okay, so this is like, I don't think this is cool. And it's kind of demonstrating that there's a bit of like a... There's a bit of lo a loss of trust going on here. There is, um, if you're going looking for something that you knew you didn't want to see and you found it, then um, there's been a breakdown of trust. There's been a, but it also that also comes from the fact that you are trying to hold your boyfriend to as to something that it's not possible for him to meet because ultimately you are saying I don't want you to have any private sexuality whatsoever. Okay, and you certainly shouldn't look at porn. I'll come on to that a bit later because I think it is possible for to find someone who just happens not to have any interest at, at porn at looking at porn, and that that could be something that they could agree to theoretically, uh, but which also you shouldn't hold them to necessarily. But I'm going to come on to that because I think that breaking up might be an option for you. But I'm going to come on to that. Um, so the thing about this and the difference between what's happened now where you have gone to look on his phone to see whether it's up to porn and the difference between that and what has happened to you are the things that we need to kind of tease apart here. Okay, so he, unless I'm misreading your question hugely, he's not making you watch this. He's not showing you this. And he's not making you watch this. He's not even asking if you want to watch it. You've gone to look for this, okay, on his phone. Um, and uh, so, and even if he's agreed that you can have access to his phone, I'm not sure that you should be doing that. Anyway, I've written something about that that I'll link to at the end. Um, but uh, even if it was like carelessness and he just kind of left it on his phone knowing that you might go through his phone, that's not him deliberately making you look at pornography, okay? Now, I know that I don't, you haven't gone into any detail about your sexual um, abuse um, around porn, but I do know that um, porn is used to sexually abuse people. Uh, so where people are made to look at porn is sexual abuse. 
um, and it's actually illegal. So in the Sexual Offences Act 2003, you're not allowed to do that, okay? Whether, a, whether you're a young person or not. And if you're a young person, you're being made to watch porn. Um, that's not against your will. Uh, then um, that makes it even worse. Uh, the younger you are makes it e even worse. But you shouldn't... So it's wrong to do that, okay? And often that uh, being made to look at porn is... Um, is like just part of a pattern of different kinds of sexual abuse going on. So there might be other stuff going on as well, um, but where the uh, but where being made to watch porn is like a starting point for that. So I understand that, but that is someone making you watch something, okay? Um, but it could be that um, you maybe you were in the porn industry yourself and you've uh, you've suffered sexual abuse, perhaps. Um, that's definitely a thing. There is definitely abuse in the porn industry. There's also a lot of non-abusive uh, porn studios, porn actors, porn directors, pornographic content. Uh, I think most of it is probably uh, not abusive. We should also think that uh, we should also remember that there are there is definitely abuse and boundary crossing in TV and film around sex scenes. Uh, certainly, with some of the comments that come out about um, what happened in Game of Thrones. Uh, and other shows that have TV sex scenes, like actors often feel like they're being made to go further than they want to, so there is abuse that happens there. Um, also, you might be someone who thinks that um, all porn is inherently abusive, and a lot of people think that, um, that even if there aren't like particular abuses going on in, in porn, like with the allegations made against people like James Dean, for example, uh, the porn actor, not the dead film star, um, so, uh, you know, there are abuses that happen, but some people think that it's not possible for any porn to be made without any abuse going on. That's not my view, but other people do have that view, okay? Um, and so that is more to do with, like, values and stuff, which I'll come on to in a second. But just for a second, just think about the difference between being made to watch something, which is horrible and is bad and should never happen, and going and finding something. Okay, so I understand that it might have been really difficult and triggering for you to see that, but you went to look for it. And there's no, so your boyfriend, I don't think, is abusing you in that way. Now, if your boyfriend has said, uh, look, I promise never to look at porn, even if you, even if we have private time, I promise never ever to look at porn and I won't do it. And that if I do do it, I recognise that that is a, an abuse of trust and that we could break up because of it. That's a different thing. So if your boyfriend said, I promise never ever to look at porn, then, um, and you've, you've found some porn, you've broken his trust by going to look for it on his phone, but, you know, but now you've got the evidence, you can see that he's broken your trust, then you might want to think about breaking up because if someone has abused your trust and you don't feel like you can trust them ever again, you could just break up. And, um, and so, but if you, if this is like a, also like a values thing where you just can't be with someone who doesn't see that porn is inherently abusive, then you can find someone. Like there are plenty of men who think that porn is inherently abusive uh, and that no one should ever watch it and that they would never want to watch it. However, I think the issue here is that even if you were to meet someone like that who says, you know, I think all porn is inherently abusive, I don't think anyone would, should watch porn, I will never watch porn, you shouldn't be going through their phone to see whether they have or not, and you should still be letting them have private time by themselves, and you need to be able to trust them. And that's what trust is, okay? It's where um, you've got to give it in order to get it. And if you feel like you're not getting it, or not being given it, then you can't give it back, and it's difficult to, you can build it back, but it's tricky, and it involves being more like, having clearer kind of lines of, clearer lines of communication about what your boundaries actually are, okay? So, um, it might be worth you having a conversation with your boyfriend about, um, you know, do you get to look at each other's phones anymore? What, what is, like, how, like, is this that, um, like, what is it that you actually want him to commit to? Like, never ever looking at porn in private uh, at all? Or is it okay if he rarely looks but just doesn't tell you about it? And like you have a don't ask, don't tell thing about it. And that he does everything he can to make sure you, that you don't come into contact with it or that you don't see it. Like you need to be clearer about what your boundaries are. And then it's clearer 
for you to be able to commit to doing those things with each other and because that's all about consent like when when you know what your boundary is you can commit to it on either side of it and then you start to learn to trust each other but when there's like a gray area around boundaries and when there's a different kind of consent violations going on like what we are talking about in your question it's difficult to build trust okay um so i think that's mostly my kind of um my advice really like you I mean, the option, the option really here is to go back and have um, honest discussions about what the boundaries actually are and what it means for you for those boundaries to be held and not broken, not crossed over, or you could break up. And you could break up and you could find someone who could more easily agree to uh, not look at porn ever, um, or someone who um, has the same values as you around porn. The other option as well is that you could do some work for yourself around this and you could seek out some some therapy. I don't know whether you've done therapy. Uh, you could um, work on this yourself. But the, the, the thing there is that it's always okay for you to have a boundary. It's always okay for you to say, look, if I'm in a relationship with you, I don't want to see porn and I don't want to know if you look at porn. If you look at porn, you do you. I don't want to know about it. I'd prefer you didn't. That's okay. And you can insist on that all the time. But if you insist on it and then go looking for it and you see it, you can't blame that person. I don't think. Does that make sense? So I've got a few um, posts at my website that might help, might be helpful for you. So I've got a whole section on porn. Um, so if you go to, here's Justin showing you how to work a website. So if you go to the porn section, um, there's a whole porn section there. I've got lots of posts there that will help you, including like a an educational guide to porn, which goes through some of the basics around porn. Um, and quite, I'm sometimes quite critical about porn on there. Um, so, you know, there are lots of critiques that I have around porn, uh, but I think we could also make those same critiques, a lot of the critiques that we have and the critical things that we say around porn, we can say around other kinds of media as well uh, and other kinds of sex education. Um, I also have a section on love, different kind and how to do love and relationships. Um, I think that uh, I've got a post here why about why I think that you shouldn't be sharing your phone password with each other or your fingerprints or your thumbprints or whatever. Um, go through that so you can find that in the love section. I also have a guide to relationships, like how to do relationships and basics. I've got a section on trust. Just go to this bit and you'll find I've got a little bit about trust. I'm going to write some more about trust. Oh, that link's not working. Uh, I'll scroll down. Um, so I've got a bit about trust here. And what you can like, I've got some prompts there to help you figure out what trust means to you. Uh, but I'm going to write a bit more about trust at the website, I think. But also I've got this, which you might find really useful as well. So it sounds like there might be more going on in your relationship than just this. So you might want to go through the uh, relationships graph. And as you can see here, um, they've got different spokes on a wheel where you can judge like how well you're doing a relationship. And you could honestly kind of go through these with each other and say, well, I think we need to do a bit of work on this or how we're doing on this. So um, sounds like maybe communication is not doing so well and trust and honesty isn't doing so well or limits respected on both sides. Um, and how safe you feel, but there could be some things that are still that are really good. So it could be that you really fancy each other still. You might have some good sexy times or good times. Uh, not all relationships are sexy, but uh, so oh, that's the context for this. And you might feel independent. So it's about like plotting what's going well and what's not going so well, and the kinds of stuff that you could work on. Um, so I think there's some other stuff that you could do there around your relationship that might also help you. But about the things that you've particularly asked me about, I think there's. Uh, I think there's a bit of blame on both sides here um, and a bit of carelessness and maybe a bit of dishonesty on your boyfriend's part and maybe a bit of boundary crossing on your part and going to find things that you didn't want to see and you found them. Um, but uh, I hope that I've like unpacked and untangled some of that for you and I hope that that was all right. Uh, if you have any questions that you would like to ask me uh, via my website, you can go to uh, ask Bish here. Please have a search around to see whether I've answered your question. Uh, stop asking me if you're pregnant. I'm not gonna tell you if you're pregnant, as you can see here. And uh, you don't have to leave your email address. You can just leave a message. Uh, you have to pop in like an anti-spam filter code. 
and that will get sent through to me and I'll put it in my list of questions to answer. I can't promise to answer them quickly, it's not for emergencies, and I can't promise to answer them all. Uh, and here are my uh, terms and conditions here. So, that's it. Uh, until next time. Also, do tell your friends about this. Tell you, please subscribe to the YouTube video and uh, get other people to subscribe to the YouTube video and share the video, uh, share the blog, uh, the blog post that it's on at the website. Also, I'm on Instagram at BishSexEd where I put amusing pictures of things sometimes. Uh, I'm on Twitter if you tweet at BishSexEd on Twitter. Uh, okay, so until next time, bye then.